part one, life cycle of a plant. Hey friends, I'm so glad you're here with us today. My name is Miss Sarah with Auburn Day School. And I'm Miss Katie. And today we are gonna talk about the life cycle. Circles, yes, that's my favorite mm -hmm. shape. They just go round and round, and my ring no. is a circle. Yeah. And pizza, mm -hmm. that's my favorite food. No, 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 and no, pizza no. comes hey, in a circle. Time out. We're not talking about circles, we're talking about cycles. Oh, I know how to cycle. You just go outside and you gotta get your helmet, and you put it on, and you clip it on, then you grab the handlebars, and you pedal yeah. fast, and when you go no. down the hill, it's like, ah! Time out. It's not cycle like bicycle, it's like, do you remember a couple weeks ago we talked about the water cycle? Oh, kind of like a pattern and all the steps. I remember talking about the water cycle. Yeah. We and even had a song, right? We did. You want to learn it again? Yes, let's learn it again. Okay. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It goes up as evaporation. It forms clouds as condensation and it comes down as precipitation. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I remember that now. Awesome. Well, today we're not talking about the water cycle, but we are going to talk about a change in nature called the life cycle cycle. So there's more than one cycle? Yes, there are a bunch of life cycles. There's a life cycle of a plant and a life cycle of an animal. And remember, cycle means that things change. It goes around and around and it changes and it changes and it starts over again, which makes it really cool because once you've learned it once, it starts back over. That's exactly right. So we are going to talk about a plant life cycle first. Do you remember the parts of a plant? Yes, and we had a song about that too. We did. Can we practice them with the song? Yes, it goes right. flowers, flowers, leaves, stems, and roots, stems, and roots. Flowers, leaves, stems, and roots, stems, and roots. And don't forget the seeds to reproduce. Flowers, leaves, stems, and roots, stems, and roots. I love that one. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Well, we learned that a plant needs some things to live. Do you remember? Water. That's right. So it can come in the form of rain, or you can take a hose out there and water it, or your watering can, but it needs water. What else? Let me give you another hint. Ready? Air. Yes, yes. it needs air. Got it. Um, it needs air to grow, and it also needs a place for those roots to go. So it needs a good environment. We're going to learn about those things. In fact, we, we showed one of those things, a plant, last week. Do you remember what that was? It was the hmm. tomato plant. I think I remember. Man, I wish we could see it. Oh! Whoa! Hey! The tomato plant! What's that tomato plant that we planted? You know what would be really fun? What? If we could plant another one. That would be cool to plant another tomato. Do you think they could help us? Can you help us? We're going to plant another one. You think you can help? but they don't have seeds at their house. Oh. Hmm. Let's use our imagination and pretend like That's we're gardeners. Okay, are you ready? I have a seed here. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna throw one to you. Can you catch it? All right, here you go. One, two, three. Woo, good cat. That was pretty good. And you have your seed, right? I got my seed. So we have a seed. Do you have your shovel? Oh, let me get my shovel. Do you have a shovel? Here, I'm gonna hand one to you. Awesome. I didn't want to throw it because I didn't want to write your TV or your computer or anything. So I'm going to get another one. I'll be right back. Do you like my pink one? I love the pink shovel. I like your green one too. It's pretty cool. Mine's a little heavy, but I think we'll do okay. I'm going to put my seed in my pocket. So go ahead and put yours in your pocket. Oh, I've got a pocket right here. Yep. Good thing. Safe and sweater. sound. And take your shovel. And here is our dirt. So we need to take our shovel and we're going to dig a little hole to plant our seeds in because our seed needs to go down into the soil. So when you do a shovel, you got to put your foot on it. Try and kind of put the dirt over here. Oh, it went uh -oh. the fence. <laughs> uh oh, we'll do a little gent more. Okay. That's a pretty good hole there, Katie. Okay. So now what do we need to do? We've dug our hole in the soil. Now we need our seed. So grab that seed out of your pocket. Hi, oh, sweet seed. And you're gonna put it in that hole. Okay, are we done? No. Um, I don't think so. We need to take that dirt and we need to put it over the seed. Ready? Pat it down. Ooh, that looks great. That looks perfect, Katie. So now, are we done? 
I think the seed may need a couple of other things to help it grow, doesn't it? I think so. I think it needs some um, water. Of Do you course. Have any? Let me get my watering can. Hey, can you get me one too? There you go. Do you have some water? We'll wait a second while you go get yours. You're really Perfect. quick. Okay. I'm just going to pour it gently on there. Mine has a little spout on it. Do you think that's enough? Probably good for today. We don't want to give it too much water. Right. I think I'm going to put mine over here so I can use it again tomorrow. Good idea. Awesome. Okay. It's not growing yet. I don't see anything either. What else does it need? You know what it needs, that big round thing, sunshine. That's right. So let's pretend like we're the sun. Ready? And now here come the sun's rays. And it warms up the seed. And after a couple of days, that seed will start to sprout. So now, can you pretend to be the seed? Sure. Okay. Katie Jenkins is, or Katie Allen is the seed. So here comes the sun. I'm giving it some energy. It's warming up that soil. And here comes my tomato plant. Is yours sprouting? Mine is. Oh my goodness, that tomato plant has sprouted. And now my tomato plant has leaves. There's a leaf. There's a leaf. And guess what? It looks a lot like this tomato plant here or that one. But this tomato plant has little yellow flowers on it. So let's see if we can make some flowers pop. Oh, beautiful. And that one? Ah, those yellow flowers are ready. What comes from the flowers? A couple of days later, maybe even a couple of weeks later, some fruit begins to form. Not fruit, but tomatoes start to form right there and then we've grown a tomato. Now we said that this was a life cycle. So if this was gonna start all over again, what would we need to start over? Wouldn't we need another seed? We would, so where would those seeds come from? That's a good question. Hmm, we may need to be back inside in the kitchen for this part. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. Ready, one, two, three. Ugh. Wow, that was a quick trip. Thanks for going on it with us. While we were outside planting that tomato plant, we said that at the very end, it was a life cycle. So it would go on and on and on. As long as you had something to start it over again with. What was that thing? A seed. That's exactly right. So if we took a tomato and we cut it in half, you would see... Oh, the seeds are in the tomato. Yeah, aren't they beautiful? That is pretty. So you could take the little seeds out of the tomato and you could plant it. And then guess what? It would grow into a sprout and the sprout would grow some leaves and the leaves would grow little flowers and flowers would grow a tomato with more seeds inside. And so you can See continue it. on with the cycle. That's right, the life cycle of a tomato. Did you know that there are other fruits and vegetables that have seeds in them? Wow, like these right here? Yeah. Why don't you show them to our friends? Oh, this is my favorite fruit right here. What is that? There's an apple and see, here's the seed right here. It usually comes in the middle of the fruit. Yeah, there's one and here's the fruit right here. Do you love these? Ooh, I do too. Strawberries have little seeds all over them. And here's a cucumber. Cucumbers? With all those seeds on the inside. That's right. So, um, let's do a little bit of practice with our life cycle of the tomato. And I've put it on a circle. So let's see what we can do here. We start off with the seed and then the seed starts to sprout. Oh, wait, where is the seed put in? In the soil. In the soil. So we dug a little hole, stuck that seed in there, put the dirt back on top. It probably needed what to grow? Water, air, and, and sunlight. That's right. And so after a couple of days, the roots would start to grow down and then a little sprout would start to shoot up. A couple of days more, here comes that. What's that? Sprout. That's right. Do you remember what part that was? Mm, the stem. Mm -hmm. And then these are the? The beginnings of the leaves. That's right. So it grows and grows because it gets water and sunlight and the nutrients it needs from the soil. Those roots are digging down and pulling those nutrients up. And then it grows into a? Plant. A 
tomato plant right there. And that tomato plant has lots of leaves all over. That's right. And did you know those leaves are pulling the energy from the sun? And then the energy goes into the plant and helps it to do more growing. growing. So then around those leaves come the beautiful yellow flowers. flowers. And then from the flowers come the tomato. That's right. And then inside the tomato are lots more seeds. So we can make more. And you know what? The life cycle will keep going on and on and on unless something interrupts it or stops it from doing what it's supposed to do. What would happen if, let's say, a bird or an eagle was flying by and that eagle came up and it snatched a seed? Oh my goodness! Would our life cycle continue? No, because if we did not have that seed, it could not sprout and it couldn't make a plant and it couldn't have a stem and it couldn't have leaves. It would have stopped right there. Let's see, can I have that seed back? Here we go, I got it back from the eagle. Put that right there, thank you. Whoop, that was kind of scary rescue. Close. Yeah, so let's see if we can have another interruption. What else might interrupt a life cycle? We've had a lot of it lately, coming down from the sky. Rain? Yeah, a rain might interrupt the hmm. life cycle. I don't know that. How might that happen? Maybe if it rained so much that it washed away the plant. Maybe the roots weren't strong enough to help that plant hug into the soil and that plant washed away. If that plant washed away, could it grow into a bigger plant and make flowers and a tomato? No, oh, yeah. it couldn't. So that would be another interruption of our life cycle. Can you think of any more? Hmm. Let me give you a hint. Uh, oh, the sun. Yeah. It needs the sun. It does. But what would happen if the sun was so hot and so bright and it shone for days and days and days and we didn't have any rain, then what would happen? Oh, the seed could die. The plant could die. The seed could die or even this plant, even if it's growing and big and healthy, then it could start to turn yellow and die. And if it died, then we wouldn't have the flowers and then we wouldn't have the tomato. So a plant needs the right things to grow. It needs water, it needs a great soil. It also needs sunlight. And air. And it needs air, that's right. So that leads me to our next experiment. So come back in just a second and you can do the experiment with us. STEM experiment. What do seeds need to grow? Materials. Four containers, soil, seeds, water, a sunny place. Welcome back. We're gonna do an experiment to see what seeds need to grow. For this experiment, you're gonna to need to get some seeds. My example right here is for a bean plant. So here's our little seed right here. And you're also gonna to need to get some cups or some containers that you can plant your seeds in. I have these glass cups right here. And I have four of them because I'm gonna plant a few seeds and do it a little bit differently each time and see which one grows the best. So let's try this first cup. I'm gonna take my seed and plant it into the soil right here, cover it up. Do you remember all of the things that a plant needs to grow? Water air, sunlight, and soil. So we have our soil. And so now I'm gonna take this seed and we're gonna give it a little bit of water. And then we're gonna put it somewhere that's really, really sunny. Like we have a big window over here on this side of the kitchen. So I'm gonna let Miss Sarah put that next to the window so it gets lots of sunlight. It's got soil, water, and sunlight. So it has all of those things. Now for my next plant though, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm still gonna take a seed still gonna put it in the soil, just like this. And we're still gonna give it a little bit of water. But this time, this plant is not going next to the window. I wanna see what happens if I take the seed in the cup and I put it somewhere where there's no sunlight, like in a cabinet. So I'm gonna put it up here because when the cabinet door is closed, no sunlight comes in at all. Do you think that one will still grow? It's a good question. 
All right, let's go to the third one. Here we go, cup number three. It's got the soil in it. I need to get some seeds. Get my little seed, put it in the soil. And this time, no, no water this time. We will put it next to the window so it can get lots of sun, but I'm not gonna give that one any water. Do you think that'll help the plant grow? It's a good question. All right, and our last one, what do you notice about this cup? There's nothing in it. I'm not gonna put any soil in it. Just gonna leave it empty. I'm gonna take the little seed and put it inside. We will give it some water. And then we're gonna put it next to the window so it gets lots of sunlight. But what is it missing? It's missing its soil. Hmm. Which of those four plants do you think are gonna grow the best? Do you think it's gonna be the seed with all the things that it needs? Maybe the seed without any sunlight? The seed that we're not gonna water? Or the seed that's just floating and doesn't have any soil? That's a good question and that's an experiment you can try at home too to see how these seeds grow differently when they have the things that they need. So you can be creative and try to plant them in different containers, put them in different places around your house and see which one works best and grows the plant the best. Hi, I'm Katie Murrah. Hi, I'm Bob Murrah. And today we'll be reading Apples by Inez Snyder. Snyder. This Read Aloud is presented with special permission from Scholastic <laughs> Apples by Inez Snyder. Apples grow from seeds. Let's there they are. Look at those little seeds. Whoa, I see that. Do you see those little seeds? Apple seeds grow into trees. Apple trees can grow very tall. Some apples turn red when they are ready to be harvested. Most apples are ready to be picked in the fall. Apple pickers climb ladders to reach the apples. Apple pickers pick the apples carefully. They do not want to bruise the apples. What color are those apples? Green. Yes. Green. After the apples are picked, they are put on a truck. Thank you. The truck will take the apples to a warehouse. At the warehouse, people pack the apples in boxes. The boxes of apples are sent to stores. People can buy apples at the stores. Many people like to eat apples. Do you like to eat apples? What do they taste like? Mm. The end. The end. Hi, I'm Katie. Um, and today we'll be reading Oranges by Inez Snyder. This read aloud is presented with permission from... Scholastic. <laughs> Oranges by Inez Snyder. Oranges grow from seeds. The seeds are planted in the ground. Do you see the little orange seeds? The arrow's pointing to one of them. The seeds grow into trees. Oranges grow on the trees. A group of orange trees is called a grove. First, the oranges are green. 
oranges are ready to be harvested when they turn orange. That's right. It is warm outside at harvest time. People must climb ladders to pick the oranges. They put the oranges into bags. Do you see the bag full of oranges? Then the oranges are put into tubs. A machine picks up the tubs. The machine drops the oranges into a truck. The oranges are taken to markets to be sold. Many people like oranges. Do you like oranges? I do too. The end. Part two, animal life cycles. Hey friends, I'm glad you're back with us. Today we're going to share the story of the very hungry caterpillar. It was written by Eric Carl and it was also illustrated by Eric Carl. That means Eric Carl drew the pictures in this book. The important thing about this book, one of the important things, is that it is a fiction book. That means that it is not real. It didn't really happen. The story didn't. Um, fiction books are meant to entertain, so I think you'll really enjoy this one. Thank you to Random House Publishing, who's given us permission to read this book and put it on the internet. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Do you see the egg? And there's the moon. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. Can you do that with me? Say, still hungry. Ready? On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. Good job. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was, that's right, he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through one. Two, three, three plums, but he was, you got it. On Thursday, he ate through one, two, three, four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through one, two, three, four, five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, and one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. And that night, he had a stomach ache. I can see that. The next day was Sunday again, and the caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar either. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He had built a small house called a cocoon around himself, and he stayed inside for more than two whole weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and what do you think happened next? He became a beautiful butterfly. I learned some things from this book. I learned about some of the parts of the life cycle of a butterfly. A butterfly will start off as an egg, that's right. And then it will become a caterpillar. The caterpillar has to eat to grow. 
Now, this is kind of where we get to the fiction part of the story, the things that don't really happen. A caterpillar can probably eat through some of these fruits, although he may not have access to all of these fruits when he is growing. When we get back here to where he eats a piece of chocolate cake, an ice cream cone, a pickle, a slice of Swiss cheese, salami, a lollipop cherry pie, sausage, a muffin or a cupcake, and a slice of watermelon, I don't think a caterpillar could eat all of those things. This is where we get into the fiction part that it really didn't happen. Although it sounds really yummy and the colors are beautiful. The illustrations are gorgeous. So entertainment wise, it was spot on. So great book. Then he eats the leaf. Yes, a caterpillar will eat leaves. Caterpillar goes from an, I mean, a butterfly goes from an egg to a caterpillar and then the caterpillar eats, becomes larger, it spins a cocoon around itself. Some people call it a chrysalis. And then it stays in there for two weeks and becomes a beautiful butterfly. The life cycle of a butterfly. I hope you've enjoyed this story with me and I hope you'll come back and listen to some more. Thanks, have a great day. Let's practice with a song about the butterfly life cycle. Hey friends, thanks for coming back. We're gonna talk about the life cycle of a butterfly. Remember we talked about the life cycle of a plant? A life cycle will go round and round and it will keep happening unless something interrupts it. In our story today, we read The Very Hungry Caterpillar and we heard about the life cycle of a butterfly. Now, we talked about The Very Hungry Caterpillar being a fiction story. That means that some of the things inside of it were not true. They were just kind of there for entertainment for us to enjoy. But today we're gonna talk about the life cycle and we're gonna show how it is true. All right, so a butterfly will lay an egg and that butterfly will lay an egg on a leaf. Why do you think it will lay an egg on a leaf? Why won't it lay it on a mailbox or on the sidewalk? What do you think? Those are some pretty good answers. I heard one of my friends say that it needed a place to live or shelter. So a leaf is a pretty good place. A butterfly will fly up to a leaf and lay an egg right there. A leaf is probably a little safer than a mailbox. It's a little shadier than a mailbox. It's a little shadier than the sidewalk, safer than the sidewalk. Plus a leaf will give the caterpillar something yummy to eat when he pops out. So the butterfly lays the egg and out of the egg pops a caterpillar. That caterpillar is hungry. So he eats and eats and eats and he grows and he grows and he grows. And then when he's done eating and growing and he's full, he forms a chrysalis. In our book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, we heard that he formed a cocoon. Moth caterpillars will form a cocoon, but butterfly caterpillars form chrysalises. A chrysalis has a hard protein surface, kind of like an eggshell around that caterpillar. It forms it so that it has a safe place to change. Are you ready for a big word? I thought you were, because y'all are pretty smart. The word for change with a caterpillar is metamorphosis. While the caterpillar is inside the chrysalis, it will change metamorphosis into the butterfly. Two weeks later, that butterfly will come out of the chrysalis. That word is called emerge. So the butterfly will emerge from the chrysalis. And then guess what that butterfly is gonna do? That's right, that butterfly is gonna lay an egg on a leaf. And guess what starts again? The life cycle of the butterfly. I love this because it just keeps going on and on. Now, what would happen if the wind blew and that wind blew and blew and blew after the butterfly laid the egg on the leaf and the wind blew the leaf down on the ground and that leaf went all the way down into the ditch and it was lost forever. Do you think we would have that life cycle still? Mm, probably not with that egg. What if the butterfly made a mistake and laid an egg on your driveway? and it rained and the rain washed away that, dry, that egg from the driveway, would you have a life cycle? No, you wouldn't. So some things can happen to interrupt that life cycle. Let's say the butterfly laid the egg on the leaf 
and then out of the egg popped a caterpillar. Well, did you know that there are some animals that might eat caterpillars? What if an animal came and snatched that caterpillar and ate it? Would the life cycle continue? No, it wouldn't. So you have to have all of these things happening for the life cycle to continue. It's really a miracle that we have butterflies. All of these things have to happen. I've made some little samples and models of the different life, life um, cycle of the caterpillar. So let's take a look at it. This is a picture of an egg, not a picture. It's actually a leaf with an egg on it. This is not a real egg. I took my Play-Doh and I made an egg. Isn't that cool? So I made my very own egg on a leaf. What happens next? That's right. The caterpillar pops out of the egg and it lands on, it starts eating that leaf. Do you see the little spot on there that I made? See, there's my caterpillar eating the leaf. And remember, a butterfly caterpillar will form a chrysalis. So I have taken tape and made my own chrysalis. My caterpillar reached up, crawled up to a branch, and then he formed a chrysalis. And he hung there for how many weeks? Two. And what's going on inside? That's right, changing, metamorphosis. And then two weeks later, this is what emerged from my caterpillar and that chrysalis. What is that? a beautiful butterfly. So we have the life cycle of the butterfly. I also have a song that goes with this that might help you to remember. Would you like to learn it? I thought you would. Let's do it. A, butterf a butterfly lays an egg, lays an egg, lays an egg. A butterfly lays an egg as part of its life cycle. A caterpillar hatches from the egg, hatches from the egg, hatches from the egg. A caterpillar hatches from the egg in search of food to eat. A caterpillar chews on leaves, chews on leaves, chews on leaves. A caterpillar chews on leaves to get some energy. Now he rests in a chrysalis, a chrysalis, a chrysalis. Now he rests in a chrysalis and he becomes a butterfly. Let's practice the song one more time. A butterfly lays an egg, lays an egg, lays an egg. A butterfly lays an egg as part of its life cycle. A caterpillar hatches from the egg, hatches from the egg, hatches from the egg. A caterpillar hatches from the egg in search of food to eat. A caterpillar chews on leaves, Chews on leaves, chews on leaves. A caterpillar chews on leaves to get some energy. Now he rests in a chrysalis, a chrysalis, a chrysalis. Now he rests in a chrysalis and he becomes a butterfly. Now let's practice by acting out the life cycle of a butterfly. Hi friends, welcome back. Katie and I are gonna act out the life cycle of a butterfly and we want you to help. All right. First of all, there was a butterfly that was floating around and the butterfly saw a leaf and it thought, whoa, I'm gonna lay an egg on that leaf. So the butterfly lays an egg on the leaf and the butterfly goes away. Now you are that egg. So you're curled up in a ball like an egg. Now out of the egg pops a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. And what does that caterpillar like to eat? That's right, it eats the leaf that it was laid on. So he eats and he eats and he eats, and as he eats, he grows bigger and bigger and bigger, and he crawls around until he sees a big branch that it can hold on to. So he crawls up to that branch, eats a little bit on the way, and grabs a hold of that branch. While it's grabbing hold of the branch, it starts to form a chrysalis around it. So let's form that chrysalis doesn't move. Now, actually, I've seen butterflies and chrysalises, and sometimes they wiggle a little bit. Can you wiggle a little? And it keeps wiggling. Because what's happening inside that chrysalis? Did I hear the word metamorphosis? You guys are so smart. You're really smart, Katie. That's right. And metamorphosis means change. So it is changing while it's in that chrysalis. 
10 to 14 days later, like two weeks, out of the chrysalis emerges a beautiful butterfly. And it flies around and lives its life again until it sees a leaf and thinks, hmm, I think I'm going to lay an egg on that leaf. And it lays an egg again. Isn't that fun? You can do this at home. Show your family the life cycle of a butterfly. Great job, friends. STEM Experiment Butterfly Theater Materials Plastic cup Hole puncher and scissors String Sugar and water Cotton ball A colorful plastic bag Hey friends, we are gonna do another experiment. And with this experiment, we are gonna make a butterfly feeder. That way we can see the butterflies when they come to our house. We'll put some sugar water in there and then we'll come and they'll drink it just kind of like they, they drink the nectar from a flower. So with this experiment, you definitely need help with an adult. Um, it involves using scissors, a hole punch, and maybe even hot glue if you choose to do it that way. So you definitely need help from an adult. Please don't try to do this by yourself. Miss Katie is going to read it, and I'm going to do it right here for you. Go ahead, Katie. All right, the first thing you need to do is take your cup, and we're going to put two holes in the top of the cup. We used a hole puncher, one on one side and one on the other. That way they're across from each other. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to take some string and we're going to tie the string through the hole and make a knot on both ends. We'll use this string later to hang our bird, our butterfly feeder. The next thing we'll need to do is make a hole at the bottom of our cup. This hole will need to be a little bit bigger, so we found it would be easiest to use either a thumbtack, maybe a pin, or some scissors to help get a big enough hole at the bottom. So we've already cut ours at the bottom. We use some scissors. Like yep. and cut through it. This is where you need an adult's help. There's my hole. Okay. Perfect. Next, we're going to take a small cotton ball and push the cotton ball through the hole at the bottom of the cup. We want half of the cotton ball inside of the cup and half of the cotton ball outside. See how part of it's sticking out and part of it's still in? There you go. Check. Perfect. Next, we're gonna cut some petal shapes. You could use colorful plastic bags that you have at home. This is from a grocery bag that we got at the grocery store. Or you might have any fake flowers that you could use. Something that's really pretty and that would attract a butterfly. Oh, We're going to glue those to the bottom of the cup around the cotton ball to make it look like a flower. Make sure you have an adult help you if you choose to use hot glue to attach your flower pieces. You might even try tape, Miss Kane. Tape could work too. Mm -hmm. Notice I'm not touching that hot glue. So when your adult friend helps you with this, don't let them burn their fingers if they choose hot glue. Okay. All right. Now we're going to fill our butterfly feeder. I'm gonna um, mix it first in this oh. bowl. So I'm gonna take a, some sugar and I'm gonna add it to this little cup. Making a little bit of sugar water. Butterflies like to drink the nectar from a flower. So the sugar water is gonna be nectar. nectar. And here we go. Okay, you'll hang your feeder from the branch. And pour that sugar water inside. Uh -huh. Then you'll wanna hang it somewhere outside where the butterflies can see it. Check on it a couple of times during the day and see if any butterflies are coming to feed <gasps> on your butterfly feeder. If you feel down here, oh, it's starting to drip. Here comes that sugar water. Ooh, I bet some of those butterflies would love some of that nectar. When you look at it, you can ask yourself a couple questions and see what's going on. The sugar water is similar to nectar, the sweet liquid that the butterflies drink from flowers. 
The bright petals that we put will attract the butterflies to the feeder. Then they can suck the sugary water as it soaks through the cotton ball. Great job, friends. Part three, symbiotic relationship between plants and animals. All right, welcome back for part three. In part three, we're gonna talk about symbiotic relationships between plants and animals. That word symbiotic means it's talking about how plants and animals work together to make each other's lives better. So let's start by reviewing those life cycles that we've practiced. Here's the review of our plant life cycle. Remember our plant starts out as a little seed. Once you provide it with sunlight, air, and water, it turns into a sprout. That sprout eventually gets some leaves, then even more leaves. That's when it starts to turn into a plant. Then you'll see some flowers, some blossoms on the plant, and then at the end, you'll have a tomato. That's a tomato plant life cycle. Okay, so that's the plant life cycle. Let's review the animal life cycle. The example we've been using is a butterfly. Okay, so the butterfly starts off as an egg. Where are those eggs in that picture? That's right, they're on a leaf. Remember that, that's gonna be important. Okay, they start out as an egg, and then the egg hatches and it becomes a caterpillar. Very good, and the caterpillar eats some leaves and he moves around and then he forms a chrysalis. Take a look, where's that chrysalis in our life cycle? It's on a leaf, remember that, it's gonna be important. And then, after it's been in its chrysalis for about two weeks, it becomes a butterfly, and that butterfly starts to lay more eggs and the cycle continues. So let's think for a minute, how do those two life cycles go together? Well, remember, I told you it was gonna be important to remember that the butterfly eggs and chrysalis on a leaf. The leaves come from the plant life cycle. So when the plant starts as a seed, it has to grow those leaves so that the butterfly has a place to lay its eggs and the butterfly even eats some of these plants. You eat plants. We did a refrigerator hunt last week and talked about all the different fruits and vegetables that you might find at your house that we eat. And we're living things that depend on this plant life cycle. Now, how do you think the animal life cycle is helpful for the plants? Well, the butterfly actually helps to make the plant strong because it shares pollen from these flowers. We're gonna do an activity to show you kind of what that looks like. We just talked about how the butterfly and the plant have a symbiotic relationship. The plant helps the butterfly because when the butterfly is a caterpillar, the caterpillar will come and it will munch, munch, munch on the leaf. And then when the butterfly lays the egg, the butterfly will lay the egg on a leaf. Well, how exactly does a butterfly help a plant or a flower? We're gonna make a butterfly out of our hand. I've taken a pipe cleaner and I've wrapped it around this finger and there are his antennas. Now let's make him some legs. So I'm gonna twist, twist, twist. And I now have a beautiful butterfly. There are his legs and he's flying, flying. Now there's another part of the butterfly we need to talk about. This part right here is its proboscis. The proboscis is the part that goes down into the flower and finds that nectar and it drinks the nectar up. Pretend with me. Now, while it's drinking that nectar, its furry little feet are stomping around on the middle of that flower and it is gathering all kinds of pollen. And it gathers more pollen while it's drinking the nectar. You wanna see? look at all that pollen and watch what happens it kind of comes off we're going to drink a little bit more nectar in there use that proboscis and it says oh that was fabulous and then it flies away and it sees another flower and it goes dude i want to get the nectar from that one so it flies down and the pollen that was from this flower comes off of the butterfly's legs and it lands on this flower. That's called cross-pollinization. And when the, the butterfly helps with cross-pollinization, this flower becomes stronger because the pollen from this flower has been shared with the pollen from this flower. And this plant grows stronger. That's how a butterfly helps with the life cycle of a plant. STEM experience. 
experiment, dirt exploration. Hey friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna do an experiment. And this experiment is kind of cool because you can just go outside and do it. All you'll need is just a tray or something to put dirt in and then different areas with dirt in them. Um, today, I am replanting my pots outside my door. So I thought, well, this is perfect dirt right here or soil. Um, so what I wanna do is I am taking out my old plants. See? And I'm going to replace it with some new ferns that'll last all summer. When I was taking out my old plants, I noticed the really cool things in my dirt here. Do you see this? These things are the roots. So what I wanted to do today is to pull out some different types of dirt or soil and put it in my tray down here. Here's my tray. And then in a minute, we are going to explore that dirt and see what's in the different types of dirt. So the first dirt that I'm gonna get is from these pots. These plants have been here since last fall. So this dirt, I don't know what it's gonna be or how it's gonna be different, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So if you wanna go grab a tray inside and think of some places where you might find some different looking dirt and then meet back with me in just a few minutes. Okay, friends, I'm back. I've come out to where my tomato plants are living because I thought, hmm, this has some really different looking dirt out here, some different soil. Dirt and soil are, they're the same thing. So I may say dirt and I may say soil, sorry. Um, but when I came out here, I noticed something a little dangerous in this dirt. Look at that. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's glass. Um, I'm probably gonna take that glass and I'm gonna put it, here's another little piece too. I'm gonna put this over to the side so that I won't be picking that glass up because that could be dangerous. So while you're looking through your dirt, be careful, I don't want you to get hurt. So I'm gonna put some of that dirt in my pan and this soil over here looks really different. I'm gonna put some of this in my tray do you see that my tray has different color soil in it? Kind of cool, isn't it? Okay, I'm gonna go to a couple more places and see if I can find some different soil. Okay, I'm back again. Now, Tucker and I have gone to a different place in my yard. Um, this is my side yard. And I am not trying to grow any plants back here except some sod, which is another name for grass. Um, we bought that sod because it will grow a little faster. But I thought that this dirt back here was really interesting and I wanted to show it to you. This dirt is a different color dirt. Oops, I don't know if I can get it up out of there. We'll try. Ah, look at that. Look what was in that dirt. I'm gonna put that in my tray because that's pretty interesting. And I'm gonna grab up some of this dirt with my hands. So that's a little different. But this dirt right here is really different. You see that in there? Almost a different color in there. Um, Tucker, don't eat. <laughs> Tucker is eating the dirt. Please don't eat the dirt. <laughs> When you do experiments with a dog, you just never know what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna try and pull some more of this up. Please don't eat the dirt. Cause I think that would be fun to look at too. And I'm gonna put it in my tray. My tray is looking pretty cool, isn't it? All kinds of different dirt. A little bit more of this. It's really kind of tricky to get up, but look what it looks like when I, look at that. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Play-Doh. It's not as easy to get up as this dirt was. That was really easy to get up. Okay, we're gonna look for a little bit more dirt. I don't think I'm gonna go over there. May go around to the side of my house and see if I can find anything. So meet back with me in a minute. Okay, we've come back over to the side of the house and I think you might see something here that you probably know what it is. What is that? 
That is a giant tree, isn't it? So I thought it would be interesting if we took some of the dirt from around this tree. Um, and look right here, this is really cool. We're gonna be talking about this next week. You see that right there? That's a hole and it's not just any old hole. It's probably a hole where an animal lives. An animal in my own yard, isn't that cool? I don't even know what kind of animal it is, but I will try not to disturb its house. So I'm just gonna pull, I'll make a little space over here. I don't think I'm gonna get as close to that hole as I thought I was, but I'm gonna pull some of this dirt up here. Whoa, yeah, you can tell what's in there. Oh, that's gonna be a fun thing to look through. I'm excited. Okay, so maybe a little bit more dirt. A little dirt here. And I'm gonna try probably to leave that hole alone and probably go away from that hole. All right, Tucker and I are gonna go up on the back porch and put this on my table. And then we're gonna talk about what's inside the dirt. Hey friends, welcome to my back porch. Thanks for walking around the yard with me as we looked for different kind of soil and dirt. Um, you can do this at home, but I definitely want you to go out with an adult or an older brother or sister because you never know what you might find in that dirt. You remember we found that hole, but I'm pretty sure an animal, that's the entrance to his home. And I wouldn't want you to come across some animal and surprise it. But let's take a good look at our, our soil here. And you know what? We even have a little plant coming out of our soil here. So let's take a good look at it. Use your five senses here. Um, the best, five, best, best sense that you can use is probably your sense of touch because my, the dirt from different places in my yard feels a different way. This darker dirt is a little moist or wet. And look, it's even sticking to my hands pretty well. So I feel that this dirt has water in it. And you know what? That's awesome for new plants because new plants need water in the soil. So those roots can pull that water up and feed that plant. So this soil I can tell came from probably a plant I got at, at the hardware store and just, I, I kept as much of this soil or dirt as I could because this is really good for the plants. Now, this white stuff, you might've noticed that. I think that's just a filler that's in that dirt. Um, it may hold water, it may not. It may just be something that people put in the dirt to make it expand a little bit. And it also may keep the dirt from becoming too compact like Play-Doh. So maybe the water and the roots can, you know, just weave in there. So maybe that's really good. I mean, it's in a lot of my new plants, so it must be pretty good. Um, there's this in there. That looks like bark or a little piece of wood. And then I found this big thing over in my side yard. You remember that dirt that we found over in my side yard? Let's see, ah, here it is right here. Oh my, do you know what this is? I found this in the dirt in my side yard, and this is a brick. Um, when my house was being built, some bricks ended up over to the side and some of them were broken. And so this was in that dirt. What's this? This is, this is some of the soil or dirt that was found over by that tree. What are all these stringy things in there? Do you know? Yeah. Those are roots. So they're, they can be roots from all kinds of plants that hang around there. Um, look at this, this is really cool. See this little rough, hard thing right there? That's a part of an acorn. So an acorn could have fallen from that tree or maybe a squirrel was eating it and dropped some of it. There's another piece of an acorn right there. I can't believe there's all this stuff in dirt. Oh, and look, there's the top the cap of an acorn right there. How cool is that? So the bottom is somewhere, but there's the top. That was in my dirt. <gasps> What's this? Yeah, I can use my eyes and see that this is a leaf. And it's a leaf from, um, it's already fallen. It's dead and fallen off that tree. So the dirt around my tree was pretty dark and moist because it was in the shade. And so it was holding on to that water and the moisture, good for them. Oh, 
I found this also in that dirt. Do you see what that is? Isn't that cool? I believe it's a pecan. So I don't think I have a pecan tree in my yard. I have a feeling Mr. Squirrel got this pecan and maybe he dropped it on his way to his house because I have not seen any pecan trees around my house. Um, sometimes I don't know until the pecans come out. That happened at another house where we lived. Let's see, any other things that we see in our grass? This, I believe, was over in our garden. Oh, look, there's more of that white filler stuff. You know, that is something I am interested in knowing what that is. Because I can crunch it up. Hmm. I'm going to have to do a little research and find out what that white stuff is. Now, you can use your sense of seeing. You can hear. I can hear that different soil sounds different ways, probably because of how much moisture is in it. I can feel it, see, hear. I can smell it. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Oh, wow, that smells awesome. Mm -hmm. Makes me wanna get out and work. Now, I probably should not taste it because it's probably not good for it. Although Tucker tasted it a minute ago and he's okay, but I'm not gonna do that. See, hear, smell, taste, touch. We've used our five senses here, that's awesome. And then in, I was kind of hoping I might find another living thing. This plant was living until I picked it. Um, but I was hoping we might find a worm or an insect in there. Um, but today I just didn't. So I may have to go back out and do that again. But what I'm gonna do before I go find more dirt is I'm gonna go put this back because um, the plants that are living out there really need this dirt. So you can do this at home, my friends. You, you can go and get your own dirt, your own soil, put it in a tray, or if you have a box, you can do that. And you can look through it and see what kind of things that were in there. I, you know what, we learned that a squirrel has been in my backyard. We found pecans, we found some acorns, um, that piece of brick, reminded me that somebody was building not so long ago in, in my backyard. You know what? Oh, I thought I might have seen a, burn egg, a bird's egg, but I didn't. Um, I have living things outside that I didn't even plant. And I have things that are under the ground, roots, things that are growing under the ground. And I saw the entrance to an animal's house, which is very cool. So you can do this experiment too. You can go out and get your own dirt and you can look through it and you can be a scientist and use all five of your senses. So thanks for having fun with me today. We'll talk to you later. Let's review. Thanks for joining us today as we learned about life cycles. We learned about the life cycle of a plant, the life cycle of animals, and we also learned how those life cycles work together and how plants and animals have symbiotic relationships. Don't forget to check out more extension activities and read alouds and crafts that you can do at home on our website, auburndayschool.com. And if you do any of those crafts or activities, snap a picture and make sure you post it on our Facebook page as well. Have fun learning. Thanks for tuning in.